Well, it's Monday, and this review has been a long time in coming, so let's not waste any more time. The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. This book made it onto my sister's ultimate recommendation list, which is no small thing. This is a list of books that my sister would recommend to anybody, regardless of age, background, race, gender, whatever. They include such books as Paper Towns, The Book Thief, and The Giver. So when I found out that my sister was putting this book on her list, I knew that I had to read it. Now this is gonna kind of be a combined review of Hunger Games and Catching Fire, because they both follow the same story. But the premise I'm gonna talk about right now is the premise for The Hunger Games. So far, far into the future, after North America America has destroyed itself, a new nation emerges called Panem. I think that's how you pronounce it. The nation consists of a capital located somewhere in the Rocky Mountains and 12 surrounding districts. And the quality of life for the capital and the quality of life for the districts is vastly different. The capital has a great deal of power and they have a habit of hoarding money. In addition to that, years and years before our story starts, the districts tried to revolt against the capital. They failed and as a result, the capital put into place a punishment known as the Hunger Games. Every year, each of the 12 districts must select two children, a boy and a girl between the ages of 12 and 18, who will then travel to the capital, get placed into an outdoor arena, and must fight to the death. Last person standing wins the Hunger Games and gets eternal glory and honor and whatever for their district. And that's bad enough, but this fight to the death is also a form of entertainment for the people in the capital. It's broadcast on live TV, kind of like a reality show. And also like a reality show, it is to your benefit to have a winning personality. Because then you can win yourself sponsors who will send you things in the arena, like food or weapons. Which is why the poorer districts, like District 12, where our protagonist lives, don't tend to win these contests very often. The way they select the contestants is a yearly lottery. When you turn 12, you get your name put in once. When you're 13, you get your name put in twice, 14 three times, etc, etc. But you can also put your name in more times in exchange for a year's supply of food for one member of your family. And these placements are also cumulative, so they stick around from year to year. So if you're a poor 18-year-old with four or five mouths to feed, then you can have your name in there at least 40 or 50 times. I didn't do the math on that, so don't correct me on it. Now, I'm not going to fixate so much on the characters in this story, which are interesting enough. I'm going to fixate on the society itself. The world of Pan Am actually consists of two different dystopian societies. There's the Society of the Capital, which is more like the society of, say, a book like Feed or the Uglies trilogy. The society is very affluent, everyone is very comfortable, in fact they often waste money that could be spent on the districts. And then you have the dystopia of the districts, which is more like the dystopia of 1984, with the oppressive government and the people living in fear. The people of the capital live in blissful ignorance of what's going on in the districts. And the people of the districts fear another punishment, like the one they're enduring right now. So obviously one of the major themes is a rich versus poor theme. There's also a theme of the media's tendency to exploit pain for entertainment. But they are both incredibly compelling novels and really, really gripping. Once you start reading, you really can't put it down. Because you know as you're meeting these kids that are going to be fighting that only one of them is going to survive. And it might not be the protagonist, because the protagonist is telling the story in first person and in present tense. She's not telling the story like she's remembering it later, she's telling the story as it's happening, so she may very well be dead by the end of it. Both Hunger Games and Catching Fire are wonderful books, and I am eagerly awaiting the final book in the trilogy, which I think comes out sometime this summer. So there's my review of The Hunger Games. If you haven't read it yet, do so. See you tomorrow.